Um, the writing process has been, in some ways, different for almost every project um, because, well, because life intervenes and you go about things differently when you're writing your dissertation and it's, I mean, I always thought I was busy when I was writing my dissertation, but I now look back and I had basically one project to work on. I had no children. I had, you know, I was really focused on a thing and you never quite get back to that again. So the writing process keeps changing depending on the project, I think. Um, and partly on its scale, the timeline, who you think the audience is, what else you're doing. Um, comparative history, I think, does have certain very distinctive challenges. And I think maybe, for me at least, the biggest one was fighting against a certain kind of that's the right word a certain sense that you you think you know one side of the comparison and you're you're exploring the new one but the one that you think you know is also always constantly changing so in my case precisely because I'd done a bunch of european history both in college and in graduate school, you know, when I went back and started working on the Great Divergence, which would have been the late 90s, I had a reasonable grasp of what the relevant literature on the European side had been, you know, circa maybe 1982 or 83. Well, that's 15 years out of date. The field changes quickly. Um, and there were a number of points where I thought, oh, wait a minute. You know, what I know turns out no longer to be what the people in the field think is right. So I think you have to be open to this kind of process of constant revision, um, which I think is useful in some ways because books like that with very, very big questions I mean, obviously, you want to get it as right as you possibly can. But at a certain level, you also have to sit there and think, you know, Weber didn't get this entirely right. Marx didn't get this entirely right. The chances that I am going to get it entirely right are really slim. So what I really want to do is I want to move the conversation forward. And that makes it absolutely crucial to know where the conversation is now. Right? And I think there were parts of that manuscript that I wound up leaving on the cutting room floor, not because they were wrong per se, but because they were responding to something that, you know, somebody then said to me, yeah, but we don't believe that anymore anyway, so why are you bothering pointing out to us that this can't be true? You know, congratulations, you've reinvented the wheel. Um, and that I think is also you know, I said before that the writing process varies partly because where you are in life varies. And I think there's a big difference, I now realize, between writing a book like that at the moment in my career when I wrote it, which is, you know, I'd just gotten tenure. People in the China field knew who I was. But, you know, in the broader profession, who knew who I, who I was? Virtually nobody. And so there are certain kinds of speaking invitations you get and certain kinds you don't get. And that, in turn, shapes who you're talking to, who, you know, who you get a chance to hear questions from, and therefore how you wind up reorienting the book as time goes on. If you then set out on a big project 15 years later than that, when you're already reasonably well known, and you have a different set of interlocutors, different sets of people have become used to the fact that, oh, wait a minute, I don't know exactly what Pomeranz is working on now, but he's worth inviting, let's bring him to campus. You know, it's gonna change who you're talking to and therefore how you're gonna approach the pro project. Um, you know, I think, obviously, in the end, there's a, something that gets set down on paper 
and is therefore frozen in place. But what you're really capturing, I think, for most of us is a moment in an evolving understanding. It's probably not final, except on certain relatively narrow, very specific points. I mean, my, my view of exactly what the decision to not build a rail line to Jining in 1904, you know, hasn't changed much since I first wrote about that in my dissertation, and it probably never will. But that's also not a topic that that many people want to hear me talk about, except maybe if I go back to Jining. Um, for bigger questions, I think what you're doing is you're capturing a moment in an evolving, evolving discussion.